thousands of desperate beneficiaries who are waiting for inheritances left by their deceased relatives have been left destitute due to the reported shambles in the master's office of the High Court. Good evening and welcome to Unfiltered. I'm Sizwe Bofu Welsh. For years, the master's office has been dogged by reports of incompetence, corruption and an outright disregard for those it's supposed to serve. So tonight we ask, why can't the master's office get its house in order? Let's welcome the acting master of the High Court, Ms. Penelope Roberts, as well as from the Fiduciary Institute of Southern Africa, Dr. Eben Nell. Remember to join our debate on X using at unfiltered SABC. But first, let's watch this insert produced by Genosi Kwene. 19-year-old Matilda Matibe is a first-year civil engineering student at Wirtz. She says her future at the university is uncertain as she's pinning her hopes on a payout from the master's office in order to augment her tuition and take care of her daily needs. Currently, Enasfas covers her fees and only a portion of her accommodation. She is a beneficiary of her late father's estate, a former employee of the Department of Home Affairs. Because she has reached the age of majority, the responsibility lies with Matilda to claim directly from the Guardian's fund. But she says over the last two years, she has been sent from pillar to post and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight to her ordeal. And the first time I went there, there was no network, so I had to turn back. And I had to go again the following day. And when I go there, uh, they told me that there's something wrong with my GEPF letter. And I, at the same day, I went to GEPF uh, office, because it's not far from Kendo High Court. And when I went there, I told them, or they said there's a mistake here, and they changed it. I went back with the paper, and when I went back, they told me well, now there's no network because it was like after 12. They were like, you know what, there's no network. Come again another day. And again, I went after like a week. And when I got there, they told me the same thing. Well, there's no network. And by the time I was approaching my finals, so I didn't have any more time to go there. I had to focus on my studies. Some blame the lack of digitization, random filing and the shortage of staff for the inefficiency of the office. Lawyers say the office needs to do better. Access to this office should be much easier. Uh, they need to better their telephonic uh, facilities. Uh, if maybe you are calling these offices, it, um, it should be much quicker to engage with a consultant in the master's office for the people of getting certain issues resolved because usually the money that is required from the, from the Guardian Fund is needed for urgent purposes. The master's office has also been plagued by allegations of corruption, fraud and bribery. In 2021, a nationwide probe by the Special Investigating Unit recommended that up to 15 officials, including senior managers, be referred for possible criminal prosecution. There were a lot of things that were reported in the media, some went in Parliament. I think there was a big case that everybody knows about in Pumalanga, which is already in the court mm. systems where it is alleged as one person uh, stole about 1.7 million rand from the coffers there. And all of those things together necessitated that we look into the uh, whole investigation mm. into the masters. And even in offices where these things were not reported, we felt we needed to go into all of them. That is why mm. then we did the proclamation that the president signed to give us powers to investigate all of those issues in all of these uh, masters offices. And members of parliament recently called for the Department of Justice to account. The practical examples and I want to say accusations really leveled today uh, must preferably be distilled to a, a, a working document by LSSA before that meeting so that the, the master and the department and the minister uh, and, and, and his deputy um, can come prepared with responses and also action plans. 
Matilda and thousands of other helpless beneficiaries like her hope that one day someone will appreciate the pain of not only mourning the loss of their loved ones, but of being reminded of their loss as they endure undue struggles due to the state's inefficiency. Ginosi Kwene for Unfiltered on the SABC News Channel 404. Welcome back to Unfiltered. And as we embark on this conversation, I welcome you again, Ms. Roberts, as the acting chief master. Mm -hmm. um, you are relatively new as well. And of course, many of these issues predate you. But there have been some very serious allegations leveled against this institution in recent times from various lawyers, attorneys, and legal societies that we're witnessing a virtual collapse of delivery within this institution. Do you think that that's, that's true? Or do you think that this is um, overstated? I think it's overstated because uh, master's offices are actually functioning at the moment. And um, yes, I started acting as a chief master um, in February this year. So um, it's the first time that we are digitizing our records, first of all. So um, yes, I, I've seen the ground up news articles about, you know, us having not access to those files, but you know, there is a strategy around that. I've met with the CEO of the uh, offsite storage company that is storing our files and they are being digitized basically. And we've also made leeway with them to say that if there are actually files that we need urgently to attend to, um, they will be able to fast track it for us. We have also launched um, recently the DC's online registration, which would allow members of the public um, to register deceased estates in the comfort of their own homes or in their offices, wherever they may be, um, in order to also alleviate, you know, a lot of people coming to our offices and, you know, coming back all the time for one thing. At least they can be able to do that, you know, where, where, wherever is convenient for them. And also they can also, using that system, um, make an online booking to see one of the officials. So currently we have piloted that system in five master's offices. It's Johannesburg, Devon, Cape Town, Tohoyando, and Pretoria. So, and we, we envisage that by end of January 2024, all the master's offices will be rolled out on the system. What about these suggestions of, of uh, widespread loss of documents, as many as 45,000 documents in the Pretoria master's office uh, suggestions that letters of executorship, which are these documents that empower your office to actually uh, administer an estate effectively, which should take uh, three weeks, sometimes can take a year. Um, what about all of these, these complaints? Yeah, with regards uh, to, to, to the issuing of the letters of executorship, we must understand that um, we had COVID and um, yeah, then we had a backlog in terms of the matters that we had to attend to. We also, unfortunately, as the department suffered a ransomware cyber attack in 2021, September. So we were reeling from that. But um, with the offsite storage um, issue that ha I have just mentioned, um, as the new offsite storage, we, we are now storing our files. The files were taken from the previous um, storage, offsite storage facility, but all the files are now with this, uh, with the current service provider. So uh, the allegations that uh, there are files lost is not true. Right. It's not true. Yes. Let's bring in Dr. Dr. Nell. I think firstly, Dr. Nell, could, could you just situate for us why the master's office, which sounds like this arcane institution, is actually really central to everyday people's lives, particularly at the moment when, when they lose a, a loved one and uh, it's time to distribute their estate. In other words, to, to decide what happens with their possessions once they die. 
evening. Um, well, yes, um, I'm representing um, fiduciary profession, uh, practitioners that specialize in uh, estate administration and uh, trust administration. Um, estate administration and trust administration are bound to uh, communicate with the master. The master's office uh, will appoint executors and trustees. Um, and uh, in the profession, we rely 100% on uh, a communication with the master's offices or 16 of the offices in the country. Um, and the hundreds of uh, fiduciary practitioners in the country obviously experience uh, on a daily basis uh, certain frustrations regarding uh, inefficiencies. Um, as an organization, we are in constant communication with the uh, chief master's office and with the local uh, offices all around the country. Um, and uh, we, we try to assist uh, our clients as best as we can. The reality is that um, they, there are a, a variety of issues that we as an organization and as practitioners experience. Um, many of it is, is maybe larger than only the master's offices. Uh, one must remember that they're also part of the uh, criminal uh, of the justice department um, and and one uh, thing i can for instance mention is the fact that um, uh, it's it's wonderful that there's a process of uh, digitalization on, uh, on on its way and that the rollout is there also as far as uh, trusts are concerned uh, but the reality is that there are inconsistencies in the uh, service levels, not only as far as the offices are concerned, but also as far as the um, uh, the internet infrastructure is concerned. So uh, we find that one of the major issues at the moment, the last few weeks, uh, is specifically the fact that uh, they're often online and uh, there's an interlink between um, the master's office uh, Justice Department, Home Affairs, etc. Uh, and we find that uh, at the moment that is maybe one of the, the biggest challenges that the master's offices and us as practitioners face. Right. Let's, that, let's, um, let's put that to, to Ms. Roberts because uh, we're hearing from practitioners who have to interface with the office that even though you have made this push to digitization, things are still patchy, the system can be down, and it's not working as rosily as you may have painted it out to be. Yeah, um, you know, with each and every um, development that one would embark on, it, it won't be easy from the way go. You know, there would be teething problems there and there. Um, we are aware of the challenges um, that are there currently, but uh, through our DDG from IT in the department, um, we are able to, you know, surely steadily making uh, inroads in that regard. And with regards to the Department of Home Affairs as well, uh, because that's the most important link that we have uh, in terms of um, confirming the status of a person who is deceased, and also uh, the next of kin members if you know um, the deceased never left any valid will, so that we can ensure that um, the assets go to the people, the correct people who are supposed to inherit in terms of the law. So we are aware of those uh, IT glitches, the network and all that, but we, yeah, our IT department is doing all they can, you know, working around the clock to do that. Right. Because it's still new, as I'm saying, that we'll have teething problems, but yeah, they must give us a chance, basically. Dr. Nell? Uh, do you think we're talking about teething problems here, or is there a deeper, deeper crisis in your view? It's difficult to say. Um, I definitely think that the last few months uh, since uh, the, the online system, etc., started, um, that we as a practitioners experienced more uh, IT issues. Um, 
but uh, it, it's not a new thing as far as the uh, apparent limited capacity of the uh, internet um, facility is concerned. Um, that is something that uh, that's uh, coming for a number of years already. Uh, I just pre uh, think that uh, with the the going online with estates in the in the biggest uh, master's offices in the country serving about 70 percent or more of all the estates in the country um, it seems as if uh, the problems uh, are just worse than it was uh, a few months ago um, but we we purely at the other end of of the stick uh, we we never sure exactly what the what the issues are and how they link together, but there's a lot of times when the systems are just offline uh, and uh, a, a service cannot not be delivered. Indeed, we're talking about the master's office. When you or a loved one passes away, there's an estate, there are assets that have to be handed over to members of a family, and the master's office is that institution, often, which is tasked with deciding how those assets will be distributed, especially in the case where someone doesn't have a will. And there have been some major allegations leveled against the master's office for incompetence and corruption. On the other hand, the master's office claims that it's on the road to recovery and implementing new systems. This is our debate and discussion tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back. You're watching Unfiltered on SABC Channel 404 with my guests, the Acting Chief Master of the High Court, Penelope Roberts, as well as the National Chairperson of the Fiduciary Institute of Southern Africa, Dr. Eben Nell. Ms. Roberts, yes. one of the other problems surrounding the, the Master of the High Court institution has been allegations of corruption. Uh, over 150 officials, I think, in the SIU investigation were identified as at least having allegations of being participating in corruption or fraud or some other malfeasance. The SIU has been at pains to say there is something that they want to investigate, as we heard at the beginning of our program. How do you respond to these allegations of corruption at the heart of this institution? Yeah, the thing is with the SAU um, investigation proclamation that started in 2020, um, it's still ongoing, um, but we haven't had uh, any uh, uh, instances whereby, you know, it has led to officials being arrested as yet, nothing. Do, so you, do you know where that, where that process is and when you expect it to be completed? Have you had any um, communication with the SIU as the head of the, of the institution? Yeah, the, the last time I, I had a, a discussion with them is that um, they are still busy, you know, winding up some of the investigations that they were busy with, but um, the hint that I got from them was that they are going to ask for another extension. I don't know. So, yeah. But right. they are still investigating those matters uh, as far as I'm concerned. And, yeah, for the department, it's zero tolerance when it comes to issues of corruption. Also, we must also look at corruption from the outside coming in as well in terms sure. of... Um, fraudulent um, estates being reported with the masters, uh, fraudulent documents being submitted to our office, um, you know, so that it w we are saying that we are hoping with the deceased online system that would curb the number of fraudulent matters um, that would be reported with our office because often we don't even know of the letters of authority or letters of executorship out there that you know are alleged to have been issued by our officers so right Do dr nell what are your thoughts on the siu probe and the wider allegations of corruption over the office i think our experience is that um, there's various uh, levels of 
of service at the different master's offices. So um, it is dangerous just to uh, to brush all the offices um, in the same way. Uh, there are definitely some offices where uh, better service is received. Uh, there are some offices where I've never heard of any allegations um, of, of corruption. Which, are, there which, are other are, which are the particularly good offices and, and, and worse ones that you've, you've heard about? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what's working I, I well don't and know what whether, isn't. whether it's so wise to, to <laughs> point like that uh, what, what I can say you, you is might that, have uh, some uh, you might have some rejections from some officers after this interview uh, no, as, as an organization we have recently shared with um, uh, Ms. Roberts our concerns about specific officers uh, I don't think uh, you know we must uh, no. broadcast that in, in public uh, and, and I'm sure her office is, is attending to it where there are uh, allegations. Mm. Um, I think the inconsistencies are, are often the main issue, um, that uh, not the same service uh, is received at all the offices. Um, and, and that is uh, quite bad because you, you develop a type of arbitrage amongst uh, practitioners that want to work with certain officers and not with others. Uh, but uh, we, we did address that with uh, Ms. Roberts um, about a month ago again, and I believe that they, they are uh, attending to, uh, to that. Um, so I, I don't want to say much more uh, no, that's, about that. No, that, that's fine and probably wise on your part. But uh, Ms. Roberts, can I ask you, since you are the accounting <laughs> person here, yeah. are, are you able to tell us where we're seeing improvement and where there is a lack of improvement or, or even wrongdoing? Are you seeing problematic areas? Yes, um, there are problematic areas. And I would encourage, um, you know, institutions like FISA, the LPC, um, SAICA, other institutions, BASA, basically, if they have suspicions of any, you know, wrongdoing, so that they bring, uh, bring them uh, to our force so that we can have them investigated as well, you know. So, um, yeah, Dr. Iben is right. Uh, when it comes to inconsistencies, um, yeah, it's about practices, basically. You'd go to one office, they are doing different things from, yeah, from the next sure. office and all that. So the office of the chief master is there to provide uh, policy guidance on how matters should be attended to. So we do that by issuing um, chief master's directives for but uniformity purposes. But, I mean, having said that, and, and we started off this segment talking about corruption, there have actually been specific instances of people involved in master's offices being uh, pointed out. Uh, Bina Masuku, I believe, uh, 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 a former deputy chief master, was involved in a 1.7 million fraud uh, allegation. Um, so there are actually there specific are. allegations. Yes, there are. So hence I'm saying that I encourage... What is happening with, with, with Bina, Bina Masuku? She was, what has the, what has the she was the head of office as the deputy master in the Nelspreet um, Bombella master's office. Um, she was arrested. I think she's still serving time. Yes, she's in incarceration at the moment as we speak. Yes. And any... Any further information around what happened to that? Have you done any further thinking about what enabled and facilitated that particular now convicted crime? Remember, it was before my acting time. So as I said, I only started acting this year in February. But I think she was arrested in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, uh, December 2019, yes. Uh, um, Dr. Nell? I mean, a, a 1.7 million fraud conviction from within the office would suggest it's not just a question of um, patchiness, but there actually is corruption, or at least fraud, um, which has been convicted at some high levels. Yeah, uh, I presume it is, it is possible uh, 
within the, the masses of a setter. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly uh, what, what happened in that case. Um, uh, the, many of the allegations often have to do with uh, service delivery uh, issues uh, of, of uh, bribery, for instance. Uh, you know, where um, allegations would, would be that an individual uh, would get a better service if, uh, if, if a fee is paid, etc. Um, and we will always encourage our members to report that. Uh, it may be difficult to, uh, to prove matters like that, but uh, we, we become aware of, of allegations of, of something like that amongst our members. We would encourage them to, to lay a charge with the police. Um, mm. um, it, it's very difficult to really uh, estimate how uh, rampant this type of uh, behavior is in the offices uh, because it would be up to individual practitioners to actually report it or not. Indeed, and we're talking about the master of the High Court as an institution which is so central to everyday people's lives when a South African loses a loved one and there is no will. It's often the master of the High Court that has to step in and distribute the assets and belongings and that institution needs to be functioning in order for that delicate process to happen. There have been allegations of corruption, incompetence against the master's office, but there have also been suggestions from the office that things are turning around. There's a new digital system. And in the next segment, we're going to talk about whether the solutions that have been proposed of late are bearing fruit. Stick with us. Welcome back to Unfiltered. We're discussing the master of the High Court as an institution and its functionality. Uh, Ms. Roberts, you're the acting chief master of the High Court. Uh, before we went to the break, we were discussing the Bina Masuku um, conviction. Yes. And uh, you wanted to continue on that, on that issue. It was around a 1.7 million fraud conviction from, from a former deputy chief master, I believe. Yes, Deputy Master. Yes, right. um, what I wanted to say is that um, yeah, it's a lot of money and um, thinking that we serve the most vulnerable members of our society and uh, from where I'm sitting I don't even know whether the families actually got justice in terms of those matters, what's happening, but um, you know if there are people who are uh, members of the family who didn't get their, uh, you know, their estates to be wound up and all that, I can give out my email address so that we can revisit those issues. Is know. that is that email address publicly available on on your website? Yes. Right. So. Q Roberts at justice .gov .za. Excellent. Um, you might have a lot of emails tomorrow morning. I know. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, the Guardian's Fund, mm -hmm. which is basically uh, when you, when someone in a family dies and there's a child left over mm. um, and there's no specific provision for, for that child in a will, um, that the money will be handed over via a trust or something, it automatically goes to this fund. Uh, so a lot of people don't know that if, if you're under the age of 18, you actually can't inherit unless there's some kind of trust structure. Um, yes. And the money goes to a guardian's fund, mm. if my if my succession law is right. Yes. And that fund is administered by the master's by, office. By the master's office. So mm -hmm. all of that money that gets handed over to children is is there waiting for them to turn eighteen so they can inherit that money. Yes. Um, but the guardian's fund again is is is. There have been questions about its uh, its uh, ability to reach the highest standards of efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us some insight into where the Guardian's Fund is now and whether it will be able to meet its mandate now and going into the future? Okay, yes. I must also um, explain how the funds come to be deposited in the Guardian's Fund. Basically, it would be, for example, if um, the parent or parents were working for um, the government and they were contributing to the pension fund, the GEPF pension fund, government employees pension fund, and they didn't nominate um, 
beneficiaries or maybe they did but the children are still minor children under the age of 18 those funds get deposited in our space and we have to administer those funds um, until the children reach the age of 18 those are some of the monies that gets deposited in the into the guardians fund however um, the guardians who are looking after the children can also apply to the masters for um, in uh, for for uh, the upkeep of you know um, maintenance issues like the child has to go to school the child has to eat the child has to get clothing and all those things but we have to manage the funds that they don't get depleted um, in terms of um, uh, where they have to then claim the inheritance at the age of 18 you find out there's nothing so we monitor that that it doesn't happen so yes there has been a lot of things happening in the guardians fund I must say um, you are aware about the um, the incident that also happened this year but it was not through any hacking of the system it was through um, if I can say theft basically you know uh, that happened um, the officials who were involved in that um, have been placed on precautionary suspension and they have been charged so um, the disciplinary process is underway um, in that respect but we are also looking into having um, a guardians fund payment system uh, that will allevi alleviate all these um, you know con um, matters that are happening as a control measure basically on our part so that we protect the interests of the of the minor children involved in that space dr nell uh, if any fund needs to be protected in south africa it, it must be this fund which is about uh, children basically making sure that they their rightful money is protected um, what are your thoughts on the guardians fund how it's been administered and, and what can be improved in the future yeah i think uh, for many years um, uh, practitioners are very um, wary of of the guardians fund um, it's it's not something new um, i don't know whether our uh, skepticism is always uh, justified but the fact of the matter is that practitioners are not uh, comfortable uh, and don't have confidence in how the Guardians Fund has historically been, been managed. Um, so our advice always for clients would be uh, to make provision for a testamentary trust, uh, if possible, in a will, um, so that uh, money will not land up with the Guardians Fund. Um, uh, it is obviously not always possible. Um, and I think one of the challenges uh, is that so many uh, individuals do not have wills. And if there's no will and it is an intestate succession matter, then the money will automatically be deposited in the, in the guardian's fund. Um, and there's no other option to, to the master. The effect of load shedding on, on the um, master C can you talk us through that because uh, of course this is a place where people actually have to go often to to get uh, at Service. least services it's not just um, an abstract office it's a place of service delivery in many ways how has load shedding affected the delivery of of the service yeah load shedding is affecting um, the delivery of services however um, we are not experiencing load shedding in other offices like Pretoria, uh, Bloemfontein and, the, and Cape Town in the Western Cape. So um, yeah, we are working together with DPWI in order to um, get those UPS and interrupted power um, supply so that at least we can get ourselves going because yeah it has got an impact on the services really but it's something that we are also um, doing in order to enhance the services that we are providing and dr nell to what extent do you think that some of the challenges we've seen with the with the 
master's offers are structural rather than as a result of the uh, inefficiency of, of the administration. Um, I think of the fact that you know, we had two systems of succession uh, before apartheid and, and then uh, after an important constitutional court judgment there was, there was really a flood of requests for services in this institution and it didn't have the resources to meet that flood or, or is, that, is that looking too much at the past and not enough at the delivery of the, of the present? Yeah, I think there's uh, numerous uh, issues that uh, that we experience. Um, uh, something like uh, light shedding you just touched on is obviously important. Uh, when sure. there's light shedding, there's no telephone lines available. There's uh, internet issues, etc. We do find that management in general is uh, often lacking. Um, I'm not sure to what extent uh, senior personnel uh, receive uh, management training uh, within uh, the department, and within the master's office, uh, but we often find that um, or our uh, perception is that management uh, may be part of the problem why there's such inconsistencies between the different offices, uh, because some offices just um, serve better uh, and are apparently just uh, better managed. Uh, sometimes there's issues with um, a short, shortage of personnel, posts that are not full. Uh, there's obviously budgetary constraints, etc. Uh, but we believe that there are many of these, um, uh, can I say, problems experienced that can actually be uh, corrected by better management practices and uh, maybe better leadership in specific offices. Ms. Roberts, what about those budgetary constraints? Because throughout the criminal justice system, we've heard complaints that in order to do the work, you need the money to do the work, and that money seems to be thinning out. Are you having trouble with the budgetary environment that's being imposed on you? In terms of training or yeah, I mean, the National Treasury did say that there should be cost containment measures, but when it comes to the management of officers, you know, um, training is part of what we are looking into as well, so that um, we train our officials, even managers, to be customer focused, basically, so that, you know, there is that communication and feedback to, to the members of the public. And we are also looking into professionalizing our space as the master's office so that we can have champions basically in each offices that would um, assist, for example, in terms of the management of queues, in terms of streamlining actually uh, the processes when members of the public visit our offices. So yeah, we're looking into the issue of training very critically, yes. We're looking at the institution of the master of the high court, which is so central to what happens when someone passes away and leaves an estate. That estate, if there's no will, often has to be administered by that office. And it's a crucial way of making sure that people who are justified in getting assets that belong to them actually receive them after such a death. Stick with us, we're going to talk where to from here and the way forward for the uh, Office of the Master after the break.